In today's video, we start our painting with brown slap chop or brown underpainting or brown foundation color. The idea here is to speed up the painting by having a brown underpainting. The brown colors will simply be your intermediate color from the black primer towards your base colors. Also in this video, I showed the speed paints as I use them as washes. So watch this video as we turn this creature caster miniature into this. I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Also special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. Today we're painting this creature caster 3D printed miniature. Creature Caster creates 3D printed STLs or STLs for 3D printing and also resin casted miniatures. Today we're using the Army Painter Wargamers Edition wet palette. Quick tip when you're laying down the paper on your Army Painter wet palette, keep it like use your fingers to level it down to remove the wrinkles in the first like maybe 30 seconds remove the wrinkles as the paper is absorbing the water we are also using the army painter dry brush set which i bought <laughs> So I wanted to see how fast I could paint with Warpaints Fanatic. Obviously, the fastest means or method or process to paint miniatures is via speed paints. But with Warpaints Fanatic, I wanted to see how fast I could finish a miniature. The brown underpainting in this miniature or to this miniature will kind of speed up the painting process a little bit because the miniature seems to have a ton of browns. So we don't really have to refine the underpainting or the dry brushing here. So do not unload the paint on a piece of towel too much or else you'll be it, it will take so much time when you're dry brushing with a very dry dry brush. Also when you're dry brushing, apply in two passes. Let the pass or the first layer dry and then you apply another round of dry brushing. By applying two passes of the same color, you'll get a fuller coverage of that color. Now use a fresh dry brush because if you wash the dry brush after the first color, the brush will be moist and it will, be, it will be difficult to dry brush with a moist brush. That will be moist brushing. When you are unloading the paint from the dry brush, do not apply too much pressure or else you'll come up with a very dry brush. Again, that will take so much time. You want a little bit of paint on your dry brush and you apply it on the miniature with very light pressure. Now, this is not your typical slop chop with whites and grays, but this will give you a nice foundation color or foundation colors for your base color painting a little bit later in the video. In this video, after painting all of the underpainting via dry brushing, we then proceed to painting the skin via layering. Now, since we have dark browns as underpainting for everything, now we could proceed to using our darker base colors for the skin. Hopefully, it's obvious in the video, but I'm keeping like some browns visible at the edges of my base color. By making sure that the browns are still visible while you're painting or layering up towards your highlights, you get more volume. Also, I was going for a very high, steep contrast with this miniature, but I must admit, I'm not really that happy with my final result. Now, buff hide is our actual base color and I make sure that the previous color is still a little bit visible. Again, so that I have a bit more volume. Notice at this point or even the previous color, I'm painting this paint, I'm applying this paint via stippling manner. 
By applying the paint via stippling, I kinda create a skin texture and pretty nice gradation or blending at the same time. To make your stippling or layering towards your highlights a little bit more efficient, make sure that you have your source of light in mind so you know where the highlight would fall and basically where your highlights is, is falling on the miniature. Try as much as possible to make sure that the previous colors are still visible. But don't worry if you overdo this color or the next few colors as you could apply shades to tone it down. Now, Command Khaki is our pre-highlight color for the skin. So we're mixing a small amount of War Paint Stabilizer to add a little bit of transparency to our paint. Think of War Paint Stabilizer as similar to Glaze Medium or Thinner Medium. Of course, you could use water to dissolve and add transparency to War Paint's Fanatic. But if you're a follower or a subscriber of my channel, you all know I love mediums. So expect a ton of usage of War Paint Stabilizer in this channel because I like how it dissolves War Paint's Fanatic. The War Paint Stabilizer kind of thins down the War Paint's Fanatic a little better. It kind of dissolves the paint better. Also, it keeps like the viscosity or consistency of the paint longer instead of just water. Also, by thinning down your paints or your highlight paints, it's difficult to overdo the highlighting. However, if you overdo the highlighting, you could quickly tone it down with a wash. Notice in the video that I'm applying the wash mostly on the base color area towards the shade areas. Of course, you could apply the wash all over the miniature, but be ready to apply or reapply your highlights if you tone it down too much. The wash will simply smoothen down your layering and it will kind of soften your blending a little bit more. However, if you find it a little bit too transparent, you could simply get paint and thin it down with stabilizer. Now I thin down this paint with stabilizer roughly around two parts stabilizer and one part paint. Because War Paints Fanatic are very like the coverage is too much, is, is too good, you have to thin it down a little bit more to create a glaze paint. Now we're applying more shade via stippling with our glaze paint. Now I think the skin is pretty good and we could move on to painting the rest of the miniature. Similar to our previous video, we simply apply or we simply paint the rest of the miniature via layering. And we have texturing in mind so that we create a bit of contrast to the relatively smooth painting of the skin. You'll also notice that I want to speed up the painting of the rest of the miniature so I'm using less colors with the layering. And I will rely on the washes later to blend down the areas of the shade areas towards my base color. So hopefully you see in the video, I'm really focused on creating texture as I paint the base colors by painting just areas that I think the highlights will fall and I'm painting by stifling and via like painting scuffs and fine strokes so that I create texture. Also, hopefully you can see that I leave shade areas with our brown underpainting. In this manner, I create more volume and interest to the painting. So I'm painting more base colors on the top areas and raised areas of the miniature. If you want to produce a better blending between the brown underpainting towards your base color, you could mix a small amount of the brown that we use for dry brushing with your base color. In this manner, you'll have a transition color, a better transition color towards your base color. I call this part of the painting sketching. 
because as you could see in the video, I'm very like relaxed and I basically scribble around the areas where I'm painting. I'm kind of mapping by like sketching is like mapping where I think the highlights would fall and I apply this like very in a very relaxed manner and I'm pretty confident that I could clean it up later with recess painting or washes or even refining my highlights. So when you're painting base colors, you don't really have to be that meticulous as long as you keep the separation of different elements as clean as you can. By making sure that the separate elements or separate parts of the miniature are painted cleanly, you will produce a pretty nice miniature no matter what. So as you can see in the video, it's, it's kind of textured because we painted the base color with texturing in mind. And the raised areas are like more prominent than the shade areas. Now we use speed paints as a wash by adding a small amount of medium. Now we use speed paints as washes. Obviously, speed paints are more saturated than washes. So we need to use speed paint medium. Now to speed up the painting, I pre-selected the speed paints that I want to use. This should speed up the painting a little bit more because I won't be thinking of what speed paints to use while I'm doing the actual painting. All of these speed paints work like a charm in this project, but I'll make sure to use other speed paints in my future projects. The lighter colors of speed paints like Pallid Bone and of course the other, especially the pastel colors, doesn't really need thinning with speed paint medium because they're just perfect. They're perfect already as shade colors. However, the darker colors, you may want to add a little bit of water and speed paint medium to thin down or to add a little bit of transparency to those paints. Similar to War Paint Stabilizer, the speed paint medium dissolves the paints a little better. Speed paints dissolve with speed paint medium remains consistent in terms of viscosity than when you just use water. But again, you could use just water, but you have to mix it like every time you have to use that color. Now, similar to the wash medium, if ever you've used that already, the speed paint medium, I think, makes sure, it, it kind of makes sure that your finish is a very nice matte finish or satin-ish finish. But basically a matte finish, not a glossy finish. So the medium kind of adds a little bit of matteness, if that makes sense, to the speed paint once you thin it down with speed paint medium. Also, I was really surprised that the deeping wells are so easy to clean. Now, before our final thoughts, a ton of thanks to all you guys, my viewers, and my patrons at Patreon. And of course, special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. So that's it with this quick painting, not really speed painting, of this Creature Caster 3D printed miniature. As I expected, the dry brushing of the brown colors, the underpainting, kind of sped up the whole painting process a little bit. The brown underpainting served as a very nice foundation for the base colors. Although I must admit that this painting is not as vibrant or not as saturated as my usual painting. So, to be honest, I'm not really satisfied with my painting of this miniature. I really have to try this method again on a Warhammer miniature or any plastic miniature, not a 3D printed mini. Although, I was very happy with the whole process because it was a bit efficient and I super enjoyed the painting of speed paints and used them as washes. They gave me like really faster saturation and contrast because they are a bit more saturated than your typical washes. So the speed paints or using speed paints as a wash worked like a charm 
but you should be very very careful when you're applying darker shades or darker colors because it will darken your painting or your miniature so fast so i highly recommend that you use speed paint medium or even just water to thin down your darker speed paint colors when you're applying them as a wash I will have to paint a proper non-metallic metal tutorial with Warpaints Fanatic very soon because I, don't, I did not really explain to you or showed you how I painted the gold trim here and this was a little bit rough than usual. That's it Pansit. I hope you like this video. Do like, subscribe and all that stuff and then until my next video guys. Bye!